The U.S. Embassy in Israel will move from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem in May of this year after Secretary of State Rex Tillerson signed off on the security plan for the move. The State Department will take over an existing building the U.S. already has until a permanent location is found. President Trump said he would recognize Jerusalem as the capital of Israel in December, and that, of course, led to unrest in the area. CBS News State Department reporter Kylie Atwood is in Washington. Okay, Kylie, when this was announced at the end of last year, I think most people expected it would be a years long process. And then the news that it's happening in just a few months. What changed? That's right. People expected it would be a long, drawn-out process, maybe not just a year, but the State Department said it would be three or four years before an actual move from taking the U.S. Embassy in Tel Aviv and putting it in Jerusalem would actually come to fruition. But we found out today that Secretary Tillerson has indeed signed off on plans that would make the formal move official in May of this year. That's just a few months away. And that sped-up timeline is something that Trump's inner circle has been pressing for. That's his son-in-law, Jared Kushner, his envoy to the Middle East, who's been really pushing on this as well. And it's something that the State Department has had to look at in terms of security. Can we move the embassy right now? And can we do it as quickly as the Trump administration wants us to? Well, indeed, they've decided that they can, and they've signed off on the plans. But it's still yet to be seen just when the formal plans of a new embassy will come to fruition, because they're going to to move into a temporary space in May. What do we know about that space they're moving into? Right now, it's used for consular services. So essentially, yeah. that's issuing visas to uh, Israelis who want to come to the U.S., that sort of thing. And so basically, right now, it's going to be the U.S. ambassador who moves there with a few of his close staffers. And eventually, we will see a you know, larger migration of U.S. embassy officials to Jerusalem. But it's going to take a little while before they get there. They're, they're searching for a site where they can build a new U.S. embassy or a new larger site for the U.S. embassy to move into in Jerusalem. And Secretary Tillerson also signed off on that search. And as we learned in London, that can take many, many years. Uh, this move, though, doing it so quickly, what does this mean? And I know this is a big question, but what does this mean for, for peace efforts in, in the region? Well, it's a, it's a fair question because we saw when Trump, you know, made this initial announcement at the end of last year, there were protests that erupted across the Middle East. It really infuriated a lot of countries that the U.S. was making this unilateral decision to move its embassy to declare Jerusalem the capital of Israel. But right now, it seems that, you know, the tensions, the, the fire and fury has sort of calmed down a little bit. And so we're going to have to see how the countries actually react when the move is made. And we'll also see how this plays a factor in the peace process that the U.S. wants to be a part of between Israel and Palestine. But right now, there's really no communication between the U.S., the Trump administration, and Palestinian officials. So it doesn't seem like that peace process is really moving all that quickly. And so controversial, of course, because Palestinians hope East Jerusalem will be the future capital of their future state. We learned today, though, through the Associated Press that Republican megadonor uh, Sheldon Adelson has expressed interest in actually paying for at least part of this new future embassy. That struck me as surprising. Is that as unusual as it sounds? It is. It's not unusual for private U.S. citizens to make donations to the State Department. They've done that in the past. We have the U.S. Diplomacy Center in D.C. that was largely funded by private donations, and it actually broke ground in 2014. They don't have enough donations to have concluded that progress, that that whole, you know, thing at this point. But there might be a lot of mega donors, not just Sheldon Adelson, but a lot of American Jewish donors who step up to the plate and say, if the U.S. is willing to move their embassy, we are willing to back the bill. We're willing to cover the cost. And so the State Department right now is going through kind of the technicalities there. And it is legal, but they have to go through a process of vetting the donors and trying to determine if this is something that the administration is really going to allow to happen. At his joint press conference, we heard the president uh, compliment Jared Kushner, his son-in-law and top advisor, who is working uh, very closely on uh, what the president has repeatedly called the biggest, toughest deal of all time, uh, peace between Israelis and Palestinians. What do we know about where those efforts stand and what Kushner's up to? 
Well, Kushner can't continue to do that work without a security clearance, right? Because that security clearance allows him to see top secret information, allows him to see the daily briefings, intelligence briefings that the president gets. And that allows him to really push forward to be the leader on this peace process. But his security clearance is under question right now. Um, General Kelly, who is the chief of staff at the White House, is reviewing all security clearances right now um, due to a previous incident when a member of the staff was let go after allegations of sexual assault. And his security clearance hadn't fully gone through. So Kelly's now going through and checking out everyone's. And Right now, Tillerson is, you know, not involved in that process, but Trump said that he's leaving it in the hands of General Kelly to make the decision. So we'll see how that plays out over the next week or so. We will. Kylie Atwood in Washington, thanks so much. Thanks. School shootings are rare outside the United States and virtually unheard of in Israel. So what are the Israelis doing differently? Jonathan Vigliotti went there to find out. So we're here at a high school in Tel Aviv, and this is a very typical scene. An armed guard standing outside the main entrance to the school. This is not by choice, but by law. Since 1974, there have been a half dozen terror attacks on Israeli schools. We've come here to meet Principal Nadi Stern. How many teachers are here? About 145. 145 of them, how many are armed with guns? None. None? None. No one. We have at least one security guard. I think it provides us with everything we need. This is the job of the police. This is the job of the state. Every gun owner in Israel has to go through training like this. This is actually a group of security guards at schools. They have to do this every four months. Dealing with the weapon. Like many instructors, Sharon Gat is ex-military. He says tough background checks also make schools safer here. In the U.S., there is this perception that in Israel, everybody has a gun. Is that true or false? False. Very false. Gun laws in America are much more loose than gun laws in Israel. In Israel, it can take up to three months to get a gun. For starters, you have to be over 27 unless you've served in the military. Then you must prove that your job requires a gun and get a doctor to sign off. Any epilepsy or loss of consciousness or rhythm disturbances. If I said I have those things, then you cannot have a gun. So you Doctors like Amri Ben Ezra also check for mental illness. Raise it. Look. The final step is at the gun range. Very good. This is Israel's version of a driver's test for gun owners. I'm about to find out if I passed. How'd I do? So you did pretty well. But about 40 percent of security guards and civilians fail and need to reapply, ensuring schools have the best defense. Jonathan Vigliotti, CBS News, Tel Aviv. Thanks for watching End Time Signs Updates. If you like video, please like, share and subscribe to our channel. May God bless you and we look forward to seeing you back again for our next video.